Malacha. Hi, everyone. My name is Sam, and on behalf of Book Soup, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's event with Gina Schock and Belinda Carlisle in conversation with James Duke Mason discussing Made in Hollywood, All Access with the Go Go's. Tonight's event will end with a Q&A, so to submit a question, please use the Ask a Question button at the bottom of the screen, um, as some of you already have seen. And if you see a question on the list that you'd like for our speakers to answer, you can click the Like button, and it'll bump it up in the queue, so you can kind of vote for your favorites if you really want to see an answer. Um, and we'll try to answer as many questions as time will allow. There's a lot of you here, so um, we do ha just have the hour. And please also feel free to keep engaging with each other in the chat area. Um, it's awesome that you're all so lively already. So thank you for joining with us here. Um, we'll be hosting more virtual events in the near future. And you can find more about them on our website. You can sign up for our email newsletter. You can follow us on social media at BookSoup. And you can follow our Crowdcast page right here to get direct notifications. And past events are also available on our YouTube channel. Um, please support Book Soup and our authors tonight by purchasing a copy of tonight's featured book. We have signed copies from Gina, so you can click that green button below the screen and it'll redirect you to the website um, where you can complete the checkout process. And also stay tuned for the whole event because at the end of the event, we are going to be doing a fun giveaway from Book Soup with the Pasadena Playhouse. Um, so with that said, let me introduce our guest for this evening. <laughs> Gina Schock has been playing in rock band since the age of 13, and she's been the drummer of the Go-Go's for over four decades. In addition to her work as a drummer, guitarist, and producer, Gina has co-written songs for Miley Cyrus and Selena Gomez. She has also co-written songs with Alanis Morissette and Carney and Wendy Wilson of Wilson Phillips. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us, Gina. Belinda Jo Carlisle. Belinda Jo! <laughs> is an American joke, singer and author. She gained fame as lead singer of the Go-Go's, one of the most successful all-female bands of all time, and went on to have a prolific career as a solo artist. And last but not least, James Duke Mason is a writer, activist, commentator, and former city official from West Hollywood, California. For more than a decade, he has been a writer for many of the country's top publications, including Out, The Advocate, The Huffington Post, Billboard, and most recently as a columnist for LGBTQ Nation. He also has an Instagram live interview series called Duke's Download. And without further ado, I'm going to turn the camera over to Gina, Belinda, and Duke. Thank you all so much for being with us. Thank Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Great. I don't know where Gina was. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm right here. Huh? Are you well, guys there? Yeah, yeah, yeah but you look, like, you look like a little Pac-Man or something. I don't know what's... what's Pac-Man? Yeah, yeah, I can't see your face. It's like a... Weird I can see her face. Okay, I'm I can't see, see it either. Can see her face. I really mad it. because I moved the thing. I moved everything, and he's mad at me now. He's it's mad. Okay. It's okay as long yeah. as you're there. You it's all right. Is it okay? Is it back back to better, guys? I yep. I can't see you, but I mean, can do can you they see said, her? Is, yeah, I can see her fine. Okay, that's fine as long as as long as I know what she it's looks normal like. normal to me. Uh, it might just be your phone. I think. Yeah, I think it could be. Computer. I bad, bad internet. Um, well, thank you for joining us, everybody. This is going to be pretty casual, um, and I don't intend to spend too much time on asking my own questions. But and then we'll turn it over. I'll take a look at all the questions in the ask a question uh, area, which you can click on at the bottom of the screen. I think. Um, but just to start off with, of course, I have to ask both of you um, what it was like for you guys uh, at the Rock Hall last week. Um, I know for me, just being an observer, it was pretty incredible. But how does it feel a week out? Have you re have you reflected on the whole experience? I look. I am still pretty high from the whole thing. I um, it you know the anticipation of all of that happened was enough to have me have like, you know, a tis fit. But when it actually happened, I, there was somewhat relief, but uh, but there's like this adrenaline thing that keeps happening because I still can't really believe. And then we lost you, I think. We lost the, 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 the image. You I lost think. me? Well, I, I can, can hear you, now. but I can't see yeah, you. Yeah, well, anyway. Oh, I, I okay, that. so now I, oh, now I know what you see, Mom, about the Pac-Man. Now I, now I see that. So I haven't it's touched anything, guys. Anyway, it's, it's, okay. Not, well, it's okay. okay. Okay, so anyway. the point the point being is that it was just um it was just an incredible thing, a once in a lifetime thing that we are are all 
still very excited about. And we got to meet all these icons there, hanging out with Paul McCartney. Um, Gina, sorry. Now every, every it says everybody else can says you look like a Pac Man. It says we have Gina's audio, but no video. Okay, so, so what do we do? You, you can't do really do anything. Don't worry. You can't really do anything about it. Um, unfortunately, that's Crowdcast. So as long as we can hear you. That's right. Crowdcast. So that's the. Okay, so that's what's fucked up. Okay. All right. Lovely. So happy to hear that. Glad I put on all this makeup. Okay. I can oh, see you're back. That's how that counts. Oh, I you're think. Back. Go, babe. Yeah, okay. Start over. No, I mean, I, it, was, it was surreal. I mean, it was weird because um, I, I, when you were rehearsing for the um, uh, the songs for the sh show the day before, two days before, we were on stage and I look up at the screen behind us and there was, uh, you know, baby pictures of us from like, you know, 40 years ago. And to think that we really went from nothing to that, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. I'm still, I'm still floating around. It's, it's, I'm still pinching myself. I think everybody still still feels that way. I'm wondering when when we're gonna have the little the come down, and if it's gonna be like really depressing. It'll but. be a crash. It'll be a crash. <laughs> we're gonna crash. You think? Yeah. yeah crash and burn. Oh my. Gina, God. Maybe, maybe you can just repeat really quickly one more time what, what you oh, said. So. I just I, all, all I said was that I the same thing that Belinda just said is that it you know it was there's I feel like I've been on this adrenaline high since that night and. Um, leading up to it, I felt like I was going to like explode when I stood on stage or pass out. And when I sat down behind the drum kit, they'd like me to sit there for like five minutes. And that felt like an eternity. But when I actually started playing, um, you know, I started to loosen up. And by the second song by Our Lips Are Sealed, I started to really feel comfortable playing. And we played beautifully. Um, the thing that was super cool about it is that once we started playing until we finished the last note of the third song, people were on their feet dancing and clapping. And that, that, that's a typical go-go show. You know what I mean? It felt, it felt like a real go-go show. It was wonderful. It's true. I mean, just sitting out in the audience, um, I, you were the only act I think where literally that I saw where literally every, like the, from the beginning to end, everybody was on their feet and uh really into it so i mean i mean every, you know it was a great the whole thing was a great show but you guys definitely stood out um were there any particular moments i know you mentioned um paul mccartney gina but were there any other moments to either of you that like stand out in particular i mean obviously the performance but like the whole, like anything that maybe other people might not be aware of that that you found particularly notable I, I I, when we were doing that, uh, we were rehearsing for uh, the end of the show, which never happened, which was a big jam between the uh, Foo Fighters and and Go Go's and Brandy Carlisle and Jennifer Hudson and a lot of singers. Um, it was just surreal being on that stage, don't you think, Gina? It was weird. Yeah, it was I like mean, a I movie. felt like totally out of my comfort zone and singing "Tumbling Dice." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, you know what? She Belinda was all freaked out about singing it. And I'll tell you what, when she started, she sang her section in Tumbling Dice, everybody on the stage was looking at her clapping because they <laughs> said that you were nervous and you fucking nailed it, babe. You sang it beautifully. It worked, it worked oh, great, you. man. I was so proud of you because I knew you were nervous because you were out of your element with Tumbling yeah, Dice. Totally. But Thank you're, you. you're pro, baby. You're pro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, it, it was, for those, it was, it was great. I mean, you know, it was great. And Brandi Carlisle was amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. Jennifer Hudson, so beautiful. So what beautiful. a voice. And you know what? And how about Brandi yeah. Carlisle coming back and, and, and wanting to meet us and hang out? And she is such a little sweetheart. And yeah. she's like, she wanted to meet Belinda so badly. And so it finally happened. And we were all <laughs> excited for that moment for yeah. her. Because uh, she, she's such a, she's such a talent. My God, what a talented girl. Yeah, she is. Beautiful voice. It's such a shame that that didn't happen. Like for yeah. those of you watching, um, that you know, they yeah. were planning to do a number at the end of the show with, I think, all of the inductees or a lot of them yeah. anyway. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And Paul McCartney. Yes. And it was a Rolling Stones song or no? Beatles. Song. Yeah, it was a Beatles song. Linda Ronstadt did it too. It's a tribute yeah. to uh, to Charlie, Charlie Watts. Watts. Yeah, yeah. Which is Did really question. Someone wrote Deborah wrote Belinda. Did you meet Benifer? Jennifer, no. <laughs> I was so excited because I figured I figured if J Lo was there, no, then then 
Ben, you know, Benifer must be there, but Benifer wasn't there. I was really, I was. Was so well, Jayla was, but yeah, not or not. Jayla, Jayla she was solo. Jayla was solo. No, she was solo. Eminem Jolo. was incredible, wasn't he? Eminem, he was amazing. Eminem walked out and took control of stage. Yeah, he did. Oh my God, I had the biggest crush on. He is. I have a terrible crush on Eminem. I just have to say it. Oh my God. He walks, he takes command of that stage. Yeah, he he walks that badass, unafraid. Maybe he's shitting in his pants and we don't know it. But you know what? He was, I'm just kidding. That guy is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, he is, I think, one of my top three um, artists of all time. I just love what he does. I love I love his style. I love his lyrics. Um, he's a badass. Yeah, he's, he is. I'm wearing my pajama bottoms, by the way. That's okay. It looks good, hon. Uh, okay. It, look, it looks good, actually. Yeah. yeah, it does. Um, Gina, I thought it was amazing that um, it turns out that you are the only the second female drummer, drummer in history to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, what did that, when you were told that, what did that feel like? Um, it, it, it didn't feel like anything. It just sort of put a little fire under my butt about, man, that really kind of sucks. There's only two women. I'm only the second that's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame besides Mo Tucker. I mean, that's, that's kind of sad. That's a sad statement on on Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know? I mean. Well, there's always, I mean, but, the thing is, though, there, but, there's always a first yeah. and a second, and hopefully you're just the, you're the turn. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I think things, things are going to change a lot, and I think we're part of the beginning of the change. When you say, Belinda, people were like, we were, we were talking to every, everyone was bringing it out. We were talking about Everyone yeah. was bringing it up, and we were talking about it a lot. Yeah. And I think there's, it's going to be way more inclusive of women in the Absolutely. rock and roll thing from here. And I think we helped like bust that door down. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think so. Yeah. What, Gina? When did you first come up with the idea for the book? Like, I know, like, because you know, it seems like you know all these photos. I mean, obviously, I've read through the book a couple times, and it's almost as if you knew that you were chronicling. <laughs> like a, the, the beginning of an amazing journey. Like you knew that this was going to be a special sort of, so I mean, but like, did you ever imagine that this would end up being a book? Like, no. was that ever? No, I you knew what Dookie, I, I was just as Belinda can attest to this. I was just having fun with that camera and taking photographs of my bandmates. It's even the ones that didn't make the book. There, I, if a body, I'd love to see those. Oh, there's no, a lot. Wouldn't. There's, you would there, not. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously thinking, I know I've been saying this, kidding around, oh, but I'm yeah. seriously thinking about doing a volume two because I have, I, I chose 500 photographs. And of course we had to, you know, get it down to like however many is in the book, 200 or something. But there's, I have so much more. And um, I, it was, I never thought I was going to do this book, but it was like, at one point it was just like, I'd bring bring the, the photos out to show Belinda and the rest of the band and we get hysterical thinking about the stuff we used to do, blah, blah, blah. And and the girls started encouraging me decades ago, you know, you really ought to put a book together of the photos. And so I've been thinking about it for quite a long time, but I had to find the right person to help me put it all together because it, it felt like it was such an overwhelming task. Um, so so I uh, found a fellow Steve that uh, got brought up to San Francisco and laid all the photos out on on my living room floor, and um, he was like, "Oh my God, Gina, well, you know what? This is going to be great. We're we're going to write we're going to write something up, and we're going to get you a deal." And so we did. Got the deal. Started working on the photos, and then at that point, they were like, "Why don't you try writing something?" I've said this many times, but I was I was, I was actually afraid to take that on because I um, I don't write books. But it, it was a hell of a lot easier than I, I imagined because when it's like you listen to a song or you look at a photograph, you remember what you were doing. You can write about it. And so the words really were flying out of my mouth. I was writing everything down as fast as I could. But um, I'm so happy with the way it turned out. And most importantly, really, I was happy that the girls all liked it, you know, because yeah. this is our history. You know, it's the band's history. It's, I was not in a bad way, but I was I was shocked actually, and in a good way, by how much writing there was in it. Like it was, I mean, there are a lot of photos, but it's also yeah. a lot of great anecdotes, both from you and from the band and from friends of yours. You know, and how about that, that? How about that? That everybody, everybody that I asked, you know, could you write me a little little essay or something? Everybody said, sure, absolutely. And I love 
you know, everybody says something different and really adds another dimension to the book by having all that in there, I think, you know, makes it oh, way yeah. more it was interesting, like reading Jody's you know, first yes. my memories of meeting you and meeting my mom and like her. How we changed her into a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> but just like every, it's, yeah, it is interesting because I only, you know, most of what I know up until recently was stuff that, you know, I've been told by, you know, my mom, by you, but now I, I, this gave me a new sort of different perspective too. And it's different seeing, actually seeing the, I mean, most of it I had never seen, most of these photos and, and stories. I hadn't heard any of it or seen any of it. So it was really, even for me, it was super um, enlightening. But, oh, God. Um, you know what, Dookie, that's a really good sign because you are with the band all the time. You're always around us. And so there was things that surprised you. That's a, that's a very good sign, you know? Oh, yeah. It was, it was, it was amazing. It was <laughs> super fun to read um, and to look at. Uh, Mom, I was going to ask you, do you remember – like Gina, I mean, obviously, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but do you remember her like always having her camera around? Like, was that something that, like, was that, oh, do you remember yeah. her being like, why is she taking pictures all the time? Like, or, oh. you know, was it something like you, were, say, you remember? I there's plenty of pictures that didn't well? make it into the book, right, babe? Yes, there are many. <laughs> um, no, but she always took pictures. She was a doc the document, you know, she documented everything um, with her camera. I mean, we, I don't think you, you start out thinking, oh, is that going to be a book one day? Or is that going to be, any? you know, it's just, it is, we were always in the moment and, and having a good time. And she was, she was always had her camera. The Polaroids are the best. Remember when you take the Polaroid of, and you put it on the, the you tape it on the wall? <laughs> yeah, I would take Polaroids of some kind of, some, ugly things and like tape them on the wall of the tour bus or tape them on the entryway to the bathroom yeah. just <laughs> interesting sick go-go humor um sick. that i think only the five of us got everybody else was really horrified even our tour manager was horrified oh my god <laughs> remember we were taking naked pictures of each other in the forest um when we were doing talk show and we were being wood nymphs and when did, did someone take a picture? You took, or someone took a picture of their own hoodie and slept it under the door of Bruce's door? Wasn't oh, that? Oh, no. And they said, oh, and they, and they, and we, and they wrote, guess who? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we were cracked. Hey, look, we were a gang of girls. We were in our early 20s and so much was happening and we were having a great goddamn time. All right. I don't regret mm -hmm. one minute of it. I don't regret no. any of it. No, no, drugs, nothing. I don't regret it. Yeah. No, it, 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 it all was supposed to happen the way it did. Um, and it was, you know, let's face it, the 80s was the decade of excess. And everybody was doing a whole lot more than they should have. But we're here to talk about it. We still have our minds intact, our brains still functioning pretty decently. And uh, nobody's sick. Everybody looks good. Everybody's, you know, everybody just kept working. And anyway, it was cool to, to have a camera hanging around my neck or my Polaroid camera with me at all, all times to to some photo when I felt like it was a worthy moment. And, yeah. and the girls loved it. They didn't, it was like taking photographs of them, they didn't even, they didn't even notice that it was a camera. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were just like, what they do. It was so normal for me to be, you know, photographing everything. So it wasn't, but like, was but like, like not to be uh, re repetitive, but like, what was the what was the reason? Was it because just for like you you wanted like you wanted to like for just like because for your for yourself like you wanted to be able to look yes. back and like and, to remember like and, what what does any a person take photos for? It's just to remember things and to yeah. have remember yeah. moments. Yes, yeah. but it's so cool that you have those photos that you took like from the road, you know, from when yeah, I mean. Drinker. Like that, like the very beginning of this like of this epic adventure. Uh, what your which what your mom said is exactly on the money. It was all about we are on this incredible journey. So let me just start taking a bunch of photographs. Um that I know one day we're gonna come back to and we're gonna get hysterical. That's why I was taking them. Not yeah. to put a book together. The book sort of happened in a very organic way, you know what I mean? But it, this was just a, so that we'd have these and look back on them and just go, oh my God, can you believe we did that? And and that's the way it's been too. We're all really happy with the way it all turned out. Yeah. Yeah, and the great part is not in the book is not just the photos and the stories, but you also have, you know, uh, 
you know, s screenshots or whatever of letters and notes and lyrics and, you know, the posters yes. and flyers. I was wondering, like, where did you keep all this stuff for years? Because, I mean, you have so much amazing stuff, like a lot of stuff. In drawers, in the closet, under the bed, stuffed away wherever I could put them. I had some out in, the, in a cabinet in the garage, and I just started bringing them all. Uh, uh, this book took a year. It, it took a year and a half to do from when Steve first came up to San Francisco to come and take a look, a look at what I have, you know, so that we could write a proposal. Um, there was so much stuff, you guys. It was really overwhelming. And, and really at that moment, I knew I could never put this book together unless I had somebody help me, you know, um, just like how much. long did it take you to actually just go through it and decide what stuff? You oh, months and months of, of going over and checking and no, do you sure you want to do this? Because Steve would say to me, you know, Gina, I don't think we want to use that one. And I would, I would argue about it because I think like, the truth is the reason there's a reason why I took that photograph because it meant something to me at the moment I snapped it and uh, which may not be apparent to anybody else. And that's why you have to have somebody to help you be objective, you know, cause I would have pictures of my feet in the book if you to let me, um, I used to take snapshots of my feet in a certain position with certain socks on in every hotel room, whatever. Anyway, you could do I a book called Gina socks. Or I think, yeah, like, yeah, the socks of Gina shock. Um, and Steve was like, no, 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 come on. Let's here's what people are going to really want to see. And it was imperative to have someone like that. that to come side. I could say thank you from a, on a personal level, because you know, I, my, I always tell my mom how annoyed I get with her because she literally is not sentimental at all about her own she stuff. Throw everything about, like, out, babe. And she yeah, I mean, we I mean, I'm never going to look at it. Hall. That's not, we at, it's not who you are. When we were sitting at the rock hall and you said that you threw every, all your stuff out on a Coke bender. <laughs> yeah, I did. I used to clean. I used to clean all night. I used to buy my neighbor's vacuum cleaner and I used to go through all my boxes and just clean. clean. I clean so much that I don't have anything left. <laughs> I mean, you have some stuff I, left, but not I a lot. I have some stuff, but I, I don't have, I mean, honestly, I... Oh my God. You know what you yeah. do on speed and Coke and stuff. You just, you want to clean. Well, I don't, I don't need that to I clean. Because I, I, I have, I'm OCD. I'm, I'm a cleaning fanatic anyway, but I, I do, I do make sure that I'm a Virgo. Everything's in its place. Okay. But I do have to start thinking about like, I do have to get to some things. I do have to get to some things to start. Well, cleaning. Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Plus, I, I, I wouldn't move around a lot. Shape, I don't, there's, it's like, um, there's no place to put all this stuff. See, here's the, here's the screwed up part of it. All this stuff you accumulate, and then you die. No, Susie, no, then you die. And then it's like, you so die. What's the point? And then it goes so, in the goddamn garbage stuff that you held exactly. you know, precious for all these years. It turns out to be somebody goddamn garbage can. So it's like a big lesson when, when he went to go pick, when, after uh, Morgan's mom, Pamela, died. Yeah. She had a storage unit. We had to go through a huge storage unit, and it was just all clippings. Really, of, of like you know, from you know, old varieties and Hollywood reporters, and it was just like you know, you no one ever saw it. They they cut yeah. it out once and they never saw it again. So that's kind of my attitude. Is like, I mean, what did you, you know, do I'm with all that stuff? stuff? Well, my we gave it to my mom and dad, and they had a yard sale, and they sold a lot of the stuff. But there was never. I mean, what were, what are we going to do with it? Put it, you know, put it along with my stuff. I, I mean, there's I know. You know it's, it's it's I'm, kind of a dilemma because it takes up a lot of space, but oh, Dookie just went. He'll come back. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that if I, I guess, you know, um, I mean, I'm really a sentimentalist and I, I do save everything. I save letters and, you know, I, it's just that's the way I am. But uh, but I am starting to get rid of the birthday cards that I've had for like 30 years. I, know. I, say, I, I was just I say, hi, Teresa. Yes, T Teresa was saying that she remembers Teresa Caracas, who's a great photographer, uh, that she used to come to Disgrace Land when I lived at Disgrace Land with Pleasant and Levi. And I I was the only one with a clean room. <laughs> <laughs> My room was always clean. What does that say? <laughs> yeah. um, you're a clean girl, babe. You're very, very I'm clean. clean. Well, I try. I try. I no, I'm yeah, you keep you back. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. We were talking, we were having a good talk. It's all good. Um, 
Your mom was saying how it disgraced and she had the cleanest room. I know. My Teresa Caracas, which is who's on the on the um, questions, said that I had the, I um, the only one who had a clean room in Disgraceland. <laughs> who did take most? I see the question from Joe Quinn, Gina. Who took most of the pictures of you? Like who actually? Who took? I wanted to know who took the photo, um, the, the cover photo of you. Oh, Ginger Canzanari, our our, uh, oh, our manager, right. Ginger Canzanari right. took that shot. Is uh, when we were taking a break, um, shooting the vacation video at the A and M lot on La Brea and Sunset, and we had to get out of that soundstage for a while. So we all walked outside, and we walked on how on um, La Brea. La Brea. Yeah, looking like a bunch of whores walking down the street with those outfits on. We look like crazy whores. And, you know, sat down smoking a cigarette, this and that. And Ginger was snapping photographs as we walked and as we sat down. And that particular photograph I thought was just so perfect for the cover. Because, look, let me tell you all, this book is not just about me. This book is about what was happening during that period of time in my life. I didn't care mm -hmm. whose photograph was on the front of that book, as long as it represented right. myself and the band. And it really did. So that's Ginger's photo. I have, uh, you know, obviously I can't take photos of myself because I'm in doing stuff. So, um, and there were no selfies back there. There were no phone cameras, you know. So, um, you know, you really had to think it out. You had to remember to bring your camera with you or your Polaroid camera, whatever. Anyway, the bottom line is, is that, you know, if I wanted, if, if I had an idea and wanted to get a shot, whoever was walking by would say, hey, can you snap this picture real quick? You know, and we do it that way. Totally, yeah. totally. Um, I was going to ask you if there are any particular photos of either your own or other photos in the book that like stand out to you that you that like that you are particularly fond of. That are like even um, or that have emotional resonance for you. I'll tell you. They all do. They all really mean something big to me because it's been my journey, my life journey. And mm -hmm. the biggest part of my life journey besides my family has been with this band. And mm -hmm. I hope that I represented it all in a cohesive, like, you know, thoughtful manner. Cause that's what I was trying to do. I, it, it's all about being inclusive and it's all about showing that this band is, is I could say it again, a family. Don't always get along, but we love each other. And uh, we've been together. This is the longest relationship any of us have ever been in. And we're, we're here to talk about it, which is the really lucky thing. You know, nobody's in a bad way, which could have easily happened over the years. We did a lot of stupid things. Right, babe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You certainly did. Certainly um, did. Gina, I don't know if I'm speaking too soon, but I do. I remember you telling me last week that you might be. Oh, now Gina's gone, or at least for me. Oh, she's well, right there. there. Uh, um, but uh, are you planning on doing, did I hear you say that you're thinking about doing a docu-series based on the book or with oh, like or oh, with I photos? Know, I don't know if I can talk about anything like that, but okay. uh, we have gotten a call uh, and some, there is a company that is interested in talking to us about that. I will let y'all know the further it goes on. I have a couple things that are sort of besides that. And I have another thing that I'm, uh, working on, which hopefully will work out, or it won't. It's just nice to be out there and have people uh, aware of your presence uh, and your band and why you're out there doing what you're doing. Uh, it's because of the Go-Go's. And, um, and uh, uh, also, the band is has, we're working on something as well, right, babe? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, have we're, something in the works. We're yeah. working on something really, really cool um, that hopefully will come to fruition next year with some very, very cool people that everyone will know. Um, so there's lots of things going on for the Go-Go's and for myself. And this is just a really grateful, wonderful time. I'm drinking ginger ale, okay? Um, uh, not not spiked. <laughs> I rode horses um, before so. What? <laughs> It says I rode horses before a show. I probably did. It was I was just looking at the questions. Um, oh, I rode I horses before a show in Nebraska, which could possibly that be would make sense. And mm -hmm. we used to ride roller coasters before the shows. Remember that? We used to when you play it like Christ. those, um, like at Six Flags or something like that. We do those summer summer shows, and we'd all go to sound check and then afterwards go to the roller coaster and get on. Yeah. And we, it was so cool because there would be like, you know, 100 people in line and we'd go right up to the front and get on the roller coaster. 
I, I, that was the one thing that roller coaster tour, I think that messed up my neck and that's why I probably had to have surgeries because of these goddamn roller coasters. Who knows? I don't know. We have fun. Possibly. Possibly. We had some fun. Yeah, we did. We did. And I, I was, figured I, I was always afraid yeah. of roller coasters, but I figured if we died, all, we'd all five die together and that wouldn't be so bad then. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> asking, Kathleen's asking, will you offer any of your prints for purchase? All my prints are for purchase, babe. I was just talking today um, uh, to the gallery that where we where I did my photo exhibition last mm -hmm. night. And yes, uh, many, many, many of the photographs in the book uh, are, are are for purchase. Anybody that wants to purchase it, you need to get a hold of me. Wendell, how would how would they get a hold of me about purchasing photos from the book? It's going to be announced soon on social media. We'll get that worked out. Announcement soon on social media. And also NFTs coming as well. And I'm also going to be doing NFTs. Oh, I have one going. Yeah, I'm so we're trying to my NFT. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, we're trying to get that going now that we have have a lot going on. It's it's time. So mm -hmm. yes, we're doing that as well, babe. I think I know the project that you're talking about. That's exciting. I know I'm. Uh, I won't say about it i think i've heard thank it. you but um <laughs> but it's said but you've got the shows in england next year you've obviously got the shows in uh on the west coast coming up here in the u.s at the end of the yes. year is there anything else that i maybe don't know about like about musically or because i know people will ask, are asking that question i mean i don't I think the answer is no but am i is there anything i'm not aware of perhaps no no you no. got you got plenty going on you've got what yeah, well, basically the next the next nine months you've got a you know, you've got you know, work basically, you know, go go shows. There's yeah, and Belinda's great. always working I'm too. Not, yeah, I have, a, I have a very busy year. And then the, the year after, I want to retire. Oh, great. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already have it in my mind. That's fucked up. Don't say that on air. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> retire. Well, the year after that, I think I'm going to go on the space shuttle and <laughs> with Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with Jeff Bezos. Um, and yes, yeah, and as Susan Tenby said in the comments, um, GinaShock.com will be put the print you know, purchase information will be on there when it's ready. Oh, so keep okay. looking. Uh, yes, because I do want to sell my prints, and I and everything in the book is for sale. Wow, can't believe it. And I'm a now I will I will go to ask a question, ask a question section for the audience. Yeah. Um, and the those of you who want to ask questions, please move the questions over to the questions and answers section so I can just look read through here. Um, let's see. Um, I'm just reading through here. Um, well, Jen Leonard says, do you think you'll ever release a book of photos on a non go goes related matter, which actually I was thinking because I was wondering, did you continue taking a lot of photos after yeah. you know, the go goes? Yeah. Or? So guess what guys? Um, I was in New York and I, I used to carry around the, you know, my little metal case with all my cameras and all, you know, my wide angle lenses, you know, thousands of dollars worth of stuff in a Halliburton metal case. And some son of a bitch stole it in New York City from the hotel. And that was the end of that. And the I Halliburton, like, the big heavy one? No, 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 no. That, 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 that was for clothes. But I'm talking about, I, I used to have a, it was a smaller Halliburton, you know, it was a Halliburton that they made to put your camera stuff in. A small, uh, smaller suitcase, you know what I mean? Like a just suitcase, but small. And it was stolen. And I, that like burned me so bad that I didn't, I never went, I never bought any more anything because I lost so many thousands of dollars worth of gear. And it was gear that I was super familiar with and really knew how to get what I wanted out of it. It was like, oh, the thought of starting out, but I don't know if I can do it. But you know what? I've got to tell you, I am going to run out. Uh, my battery's going to run out in one second. But I want to, want to say that I'm going to go out and I'm going to get a new camera and I'm going to start shooting again. And I I'm, I have a couple ideas of things that I might shoot um, that, that, that won't be Go-Go's related. Um, but I, I, I absolutely love photography. And I always have. And if you're in, you go in my house, I have, you know, I've bought a lot of photography that I have, have up on my walls and lots of books. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. It, it really appeals to me. Um, I was going to, oh, so, uh, BP asked, Gina, did anything surprise you from the memorabilia that you forgot about? And mom, actually similar question for either, for both of you. Are there things that when you looked, or Gina, in your case, when you found the stuff and my mom, when you looked at the book 
anything in particular that you'd forgotten about where you were like, wow, like I, I couldn't, I forgot about that day or that photo or that event or show. Um, I love for me the, the, the photos were so funny from Reading when we were recording talk show and Jane was, was making like she was jumping out of the window. Cause that mm -hmm. whole, that mean, I, I lot of that whole period, I, I it was so chaotic and so it was toxic. It toxic. That it was. was a lot that I, that I uh, forgot about. And I forgot about that whole, you know, all the mischief that we got up to there for the most part, I forgot about it. But I mean, well, I, people I, were leaving. People were leaving in the middle of recording. They were leaving not only the not only where we were staying, but leaving the country. Actually, if you remember. Oh my God! It took me five planes to finally get on to be. I I missed five different flights getting there. I had to keep going back and forth to the airport for like five days in a row. So that's lovely. Just that's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Such a mess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that kind of you know yeah. But I love those pictures. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I love all the pictures, I, you know, and I love some of the early rehearsal photos are great. Really good. Gina? Yes. What was the question anything again? You found? Oh. Wait, anything oh, you found? Anything you found you were finding no. where you were like, wow. I got to say, every time that I have any of those photos, I, when I looked at them, I remembered everything. I really did. And my memory sucks, man. But looking at those photographs, I can remember everything that was going on. And that's how come it was easy to write the stories, you know? It was it was really easy because I just, I remembered it all. Um, and I'm so happy that I kept all this stuff. I really am. Because the Go-Go's, like, we really needed a book like this. There's no book out there. But, I mean, lots of bands there, or artists have books, you know, that are either are photos or photos and uh you know some writing we finally had that and it's about damn time i'm glad i did it we needed it it's important for that to be out there when we're all dead and gone it'll still be there who's dying <laughs> i'm not dying i know i said when we're all dead and gone whenever that I, I have no intention of dying okay well please let me know that and we'll hang out together and never die okay <laughs> i no, some someone no, mentioned no, um I wanted to say to you guys something that I, someone mentioned it, that, um, you know, the fact that you guys uh, played with the Foo Fighters after party and that you both did some songs with Pat ah. Smear from the Germs. Um, what was that like being, uh, playing with him? And well, like, I mean, with Pat, okay, it's, it's a funny story because I met Pat when I was in high school. I went with my friend Terry from art class to the Beverly Hilton to go get Freddie Mercury's autograph because we were total <laughs> Queen fanatics. So we were sitting in the lobby of the Beverly Hilton and we see these two weird looking kids sitting across, you know, across the lobby and they're looking at us and we're looking at them and we're trying to get our nerve up to talk to each other. And, and they were there for Freddie Mercury too. And it was, um, it was Pat and it was Darby who was Darby, uh, Darby Crash, uh, but it, you know, it wasn't Darby yeah. at the time. Yeah. So yeah. we went up to Freddie Mercury's room. We found out what room he was in and we knocked on his door. Can you imagine looking through the peephole and seeing these, 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 these kids outside your, your door? But he didn't answer. So Aww. we started, we, we, we went over to, we would all meet at Darby's mom's apartment and listen to the Sex Pistols and all the singles that came from, from the UK. and. And um, we decided to form the Germs, a band, because we, you know, the kids that we knew, it was like 50 kids in the scene, were in bands. So um, it was funny because that was Pat and, Pat and my first band was the Germs. So when the Foo Fighters found out they were inducted, and and the Go Go's found out that we found out we were inducted, he texted me and he, and he said, uh, "Who would have guessed from the Germs to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame?" Which is very funny. And then when it got closer, he asked, would I sing a germ song? Just pick a germ song and Dave will play drums. And Gina, you played it with Pat and the go-go stuff. So I chose Forming because it's a song that I do remember when, and Darby was a, a brilliant lyricist. He was like, he was a poet, like a punk poet. So I wrote all, all the lyrics and just went on there and just kind of winged it. And, I, and when I couldn't read, because it was dark and I didn't have my glasses, and I would just go, la, 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 la. <laughs> and people liked it even more. Everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. 
And it was, good uh, it was just, it was great. And we were like talking about what Darby, you know, what would what would Darby be thinking right now if he could, you know, if he could look down and, and see us and we're like, oh, I don't know if he'd, if he'd <laughs> he Oh, come on, he'd be laughing his ass he'd off like everybody's ass off. So it was, it was just, it was really sweet and full circle. And then Jane wasn't at the party. So, so we did a few go-go songs with Pat playing Jane. Pat Spots. played, yeah, Pat and, played guitar and I played drums, Babe yeah. sang and yeah. um, Kathy played bass. And what we did like three or four songs. We we had a great time. The Foo Fighters are so awesome. Nice Such great guys from the yeah. top to the bottom. Um, uh, you know they. It's they cool just that Jane. Right I mean, it's huh? it's cool that Pat knew how to play the Go Go songs too. Oh, you can. He was around. Incredible. He was around. He he'd come to Go Go shows. You know, I, I remember Pat. He never wore shoes. He was always barefoot. Remember that, Gina? Yes. He, he would yes. never be wearing shoes. And he was just crazy looking, and but he was on the, the go, early Go Go show, so he, he know, and he's an he's an amazing musician, so he could pick it up like it that. Makes it look you know? so easy. Yeah. You know what gives me like when Pat's playing, he's just got a smile on his face. Like when, okay, for instance, when we were up rehearsing for that last number that never that we never got to play, I walked over to him on stage and I was like, Pat, why are you always smiling in the midst of all this chaos? You know, and he said because. Look at this. This is so great. And I thought, you know what? You're goddamn right. It is great. Is we're all up here on stage. We've come from very humble beginnings. And he, the smile just, I was like, yes, I need to remember that. Because I'm sitting over there so nervous. Belinda was nervous. We're all nervous. And like, he's smiling and happy. I was like, are you meditating constantly? What do you do? He's always been like a Buddha, like a really like solid, calm, so wise his voice is and very he, calm and everything he comes out with these things and he's just an amazing person he's a really he's like a something from another dimension like a fairy or something you know he's he's otherworldly is what he is he's, he's, he's always is been otherworldly incredible guy is all i know yeah and i want to hang out with pat more because i really really adore he's, him yeah, he was adorable you know he just brings it all down to a level that is just really beautiful yeah. and comfortable and like yeah nice. he laughs, laughs at everything he laughs so yeah. easily too which is another yeah. beautiful thing he yeah. laughs very yeah. easily he's great and he's great. you know also i gotta say hanging out with taylor for me was such a thrill because he's such an incredible drummer but um uh, it, it's just really neat to hang out with people that you respect and admire and you get and and you get the same thing back from them because you never know what to expect from folks, you know? No, you don't. Um, and Taylor was just loves our band. They all love our band so much and think we're great and really <laughs> neat, really cool. Um, I was one thing I missed that I that I wanted someone Jonathan Vasquez asked that um was a good question. But I didn't get I didn't get to see Drew backstage with you guys. What was that like? Um you know, with Drew and and having her introduce you, and what was that? What was that whole experience like backstage when she finally got to meet you? Because she said like that was like a come, coming full circle moment. Yeah, for it her. was. It was. Well, she used to come to the shows as a little girl and and uh, all dressed up like a go go, and it's her baby go go. And and so you know through the years, and we you know we'd see her at shows, and and so it seemed like the perfect person to induct us. So it was a fan that kind of got it and she's she's kind of similar to us in a lot of ways too you know in a lot many ways and um her induction speech was so beautiful and so emotional for me i almost started to cry after we were, we were all teary-eyed in the back we were all yeah. teary-eyed you know and you know when you see it when those of you who have you know who will be watching the 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 ceremony on, I think it's on November 20th, it's being te televised. Yeah, yeah. It's so heartfelt and so true and, and, and you know, not just some Hollywood person like writing something down. It was like, it was really well thought out. And, you know, she put the face mask on, wrapped herself in the towel and, and um, you know, I, it was, it, we, I think we were all really emotional. I know I was, I almost started to cry watching her because it's, it was mm -hmm. just touching, really touching. So, and afterwards, after we did our performance, it was, it was like full circle. We were all like hugged and- I love that moment when you all put your arms around each other. That was really cute after you performed. Yeah. 
was really cute. There's some great photograph that somebody took uh, of that moment when we had our arms around each other and Drew is in the background going like, like this, you know, and it is, it, I want to get, I want to blow that photo up and send it to her. We that should do something. Great. Yeah. It's really cool. It's really a cool photo. Well, I mean, she, she went beyond the call of duty of someone oh my God. giving a speech. I mean, she's, She's she really an, an amazing, amazing person. Amazing. We love Drew very yeah, more for we real. <laughs> we do. For real. For real, for real. For real, for reals. I was going to ask Gina because I was I was reading about I've always loved House of Shock and I loved mm -hmm. the Middle of Nowhere. And uh, I was always curious about the story behind that because and, and so when I read the book, I was just curious, like, because I was kind of I was trying to understand like what you said that that was it that right when the record was already coming out that the album or the, the record company leadership got, got fired or changed and yeah. you decided to leave the record company in the middle of the promotion or what was the situation? Uh, what happened? Yeah. It was a, a very typical thing that happens. Typical. Belinda knows this sort typical. of story. Typical. Yeah. Um, you work hard on the record with a team of people that, that signed you, you get the record done. You go out and you start to do a couple shows. The record's starting to move a little bit, right? Um, and then all of a sudden I get a call from my A&R guy saying, Gina, I'm just letting you know ahead of time, you're going to get a call. We're all fired. Huh. Everybody's being fired from the president all the way down. So I'm going to give you the choice right now to get out of your deal or to stay in your deal. Now, anybody that's been in the business for, for any amount of time knows you want to get out of your deal. Because if you get stuck in that deal with a whole new regime of people coming in, you're screwed. You become a yeah. tax rate. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's happened to me so many times. There you go. You, you become a tax write-off. And they'll just keep you hanging on. They won't let you go, though. So it was like I, uh, you know, it was so Tom Wally let me go. And I thank him to this day. And then Tom went on to form, uh, um, what do you call it, records with um, Jimmy Ivey. Oh wow, Def oh, Jam? Hollywood Records. Yeah, no, not Def Jam. Fucking Holly Hollywood Records. No, the big one. What's oh. What's Dr. Dre on? Oh, I know. What's Eminem one. About? Come I think on. it was Def Jam. No. Anyway. Oh, everybody, um, Interscope. Thank you, Susan. Interscope. Yeah, he Thank went you, on to Susie, busy, busy Susie. Yeah, Interscope, Interscope. Yeah. So Tom went on to do that with Jimmy Iovine, and I don't know what happened there, but you know. That's where my a and R guy went, and he when he signed me, we did one show at the Whiskey and got a record deal, which was pretty phenomenal. Um, and Tom told me, he said, Gina, you know what? You're somebody that I want to develop because back then, you know, they, it was kind of they were just they were starting they were starting to stop working with bands that stopped doing development deals, which was what I was. I was a baby band. I was new at this being on my own and I needed, I needed to work. I needed to get better and better. And we felt like we had done a great job. First album stepping stone for the next one. And then it was the plug was pulled that pulled out from underneath of us. And, and that was that, which kind of sucked, but uh, it's happened to other people, not just oh, me. Yeah. So, you know, it's happened to my lived. mom like two or three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, know, knows. Just, she knows. Yeah. Terrible timing. You know, it just, it just totally happens. sucks because you, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Right. Um, someone said earlier was the tumbling dice song filmed at the end of the rock and that see that to me I don't understand like why they couldn't have at least filmed it and put it out on YouTube or something because basically you guys yes. were going to do that big group song at the rock hall and then they said because it was running over overtime or something they were like we're not even going to record it or even perform it I think it was, it was probably union guys and everything is union and they probably that. they probably couldn't. you know what I didn't think about that but the union rules with an iron fist okay yeah. those so they, events, i mean yeah. you cannot step in a certain place that they tell you not to they'll you know i mean you're they'll throw you out of the goddamn hall so it, it yeah the union rules big time and they were like no we were told three different times come up you're ready you're gonna do tumbling dice now go back yeah. no come back up no 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 go back come back up eh. yeah whatever yeah. Somebody spoke too um, long. I'm not going to say who, but somebody did. Uh, a couple of people spoke too, spoke too long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sarah Kramer, love you, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Asked um, about the Turn to You video, because actually that's something that I've always been curious about. Like, was that 
I mean, it's actually kind. It was kind of a ahead of its time video. I mean, and 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 I know probably the I don't know if the intent was to make a statement about gender bending and all that, but it actually was pretty progressive for its time. Like, is that something that you were? Was it just totally silly? Or did no, you have yeah, it was any... just silly. We didn't think in terms of that at all. I mean, this is like 1984. He didn't, yeah, but, he didn't but it's pretty unusual about, to have it, especially because you were women and you know, in music videos, it's all about, oh, women have to be sexy and you guys were in drag, we, which is like totally. What that idea? Well, oh, Mary Lambert, Mary director, Lambert. came up with that idea. We didn't have anything to do with that. He came up with that idea and we were like, yes, we love this. But yeah. we weren't trying to make any kind of a statement. We were just having fun. This is this was our humor. Like, yeah, we're going to do this and blow people's minds. They're going to like, you know, but happy to it's be a, a part of video. Movie. It's a funny video. Oh my God, well, we're out on our trolley during that filming. Ooh. Ooh. Well, it's funny because people Ooh. always Wrong say that, that <laughs> people always compare me to, or compare my mom in the video to me. So like, you know, with her- I look like a young one Newton. Her, Oh my God. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh my God. Remember you go like this, you go. <laughs> <laughs> a young oh my God. And... We had fun. We had fun doing that at the uh, Doheny mansion, roaming all around there and running in different um, rooms. Yep. A bunch yep. of coops. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, good. I know you've already told this story and as someone pointed out, it's in the documentary, but maybe you can share for those who don't know the, or the, um, our lips are sealed music video story because I still can't just believe it's incredible that you guys literally just got out of the car and just jumped in and in the fountain and didn't even think twice about you actually you actually wanted to get arrested we were, literally we were so we were so bored 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 we I mean we could have been doing something way more important than this running around town filming you know we it was before video before MTV really. And so we didn't really realize the importance of, of, the, the, you know, of what we were doing. And so we just couldn't be bothered. It was just like, okay, you know, a few couple more hours. So we thought, let's shake it up and try to get arrested. So we went to the fountain on Santa Monica and Wilshire. And nobody would arrest us. Yeah, nobody I mean, that's like <laughs> such heavy traffic there. And we thought that would be the best place to get arrested, right we in front of that film. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody stopped. We were, shit, we were fl flipping around in that <laughs> fountain for quite a while. Nobody stopped or anything. It was so weird. It really makes me laugh because. But you didn't nobody, think that that no. was. Why, well, if if we thought you didn't it was think like, what if we actually do get arrested? That wouldn't have been great publicity. That would have been even that better. Been great. That would that have been, been better. Great. Yeah, of course. That's what we wanted. We wanted that's it all wanted, on film. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We were bored shitless. We had no idea what we were doing. I mean, when I look when I look back on that video, that it makes me laugh, that fountain stuff is makes me laugh every single time. Everybody is such a kook in it. So funny. Oh my God, Belinda, what a time we have had, huh? Yeah, it's definitely. been the best. I think the spontaneity yeah. is what makes it so great. Is that yeah. you guys did just like that? It wasn't like all you know overly produced and well that's you know, what the go goes like, the yeah. go goes always sort of like wing it as we go along and we don't really you know we don't really take things that seriously and i think there's no pretense no, Absolutely. We just, yeah. no and, and i think people respond to that because there's so much mm -hmm. pretense and in office in authenticity out there um but i think that's one thing that we have and also i think the live show is like you Boom. know well, it's like a it's a runaway train that could crash at any minute, and that's what it kind of that's what it feels like to me being out front. I mean, like you know, whoa! And I think that the audience responds to that too. And not a lot of bands have that. And I have to say that that's one of our strong points that I think people respond to. Like that we're we no pretense to just having yeah. a, having a good time. We don't rely on any stage props or any of that bullshit. It's like just the five of us out there doing what we do, and. And it just goes, and it goes the way it's going to happen, and we just whatever happens happens. We just keep rolling, like she said. It is true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't think we don't think too hard about things. We never have, never have. It just kind of works. We only have time for a few more questions, but uh, okay. I was going to ask you. Or one, so uh, let's see. Uh, Ray asked if you have any. Well, he asked particularly about any memories with Dolly Parton. But in general, 
Because like I love the Jim, the sad, but the Jim Belushi story in the, the John Belushi in the book too. John Belushi. Um, yeah. Are there any particular like moments that you remember with meeting these some of the celebrities that are in the book that or other, or ones there's, outside the book that? There's a lot of photos that I didn't put in there of us with many celebrities, right, babe? There's so many yeah. shots of us with other celebs that I didn't put in there because um, I didn't want this to be a book about, oh, here's everybody we met. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be just a couple people that actually uh, that we kind of connected with, you know what I mean? Um, or that was really a funny pairing. Like, for instance, us and Dolly Parton. That's perfect, right? Or um, us and Superman. I love that, you know. Um, Superman mm -hmm. with coat boogers hanging out of his nose. I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's, uh, Jonathan asked, "What is your strangest? What is your strangest celebrity encounter?" I think I can remember? answer that one. I think the weirdest one was when Prince came to a show, oh, and God. he came. He came and sat in the dressing room with his bodyguard, and he didn't say one word, and he just sat there and just and observed we thought he was going to come back and you know i mean he wasn't un unfriendly he just didn't say anything yeah you know he's like a voyeur is what he was yeah what so he, was. He, he, he he sat there with his big old bodyguard didn't say a word and we were like what the fuck's going on with this guy so we just thought you know what we're going to get ready for the show you can sit there all you want and so we kind of ignored him which is kind of we shouldn't have we probably should have engaged well, in it's it kind of, kind of intimidating it, yeah, I well, he, yeah I, and that's exactly what he wanted you know so exactly. i think by ignoring him probably really pissed him off probably <laughs> he came he came to my my first solo so, show at the whiskey and sent flowers afterwards which was very nice oh well hey that, that was uh, very gentlemanly but yes, he's a strange guy but we had oh i don't know i mean we've had so many encounters so many encounters. Yes, we've had many encounters. <laughs> Mark Lauren says, love the pick with kiss in the book, but where was Belinda when it was taken? Probably, I, God knows. Well, I'm in the bathroom. I love, yeah, exactly. Um, I love what you said, but I asked you where you were when the, for the vacation photos. Outside. I was in the bathroom. That was in the bathroom during that. <laughs> yeah. I was, that's why I was, I was, I was like, I remember that I was, did not feel good. That's for sure. Oh, baby. We were there for a million hours. I know. Exactly. No, but you Where mean you were in the bathroom, up. what, like throwing up? Or no, you were in the bathroom no, doing... No, it was during, it was during oh. coke. Doing blow, silly. Well, no, because you said you didn't feel good. So no, I didn't, I didn't, didn't feel good. That made her feel better. That was to make yeah. herself feel better and get energy. Oh, I see. Got it. Get ready for her next um, shot. Well, exactly. <laughs> any, any, I'm, I'm sorry, everyone, if uh, we only have time for like two more, one or two more questions, but okay, um, okay. So if you want to ask a question, um, to tell, uh, send it in right now, but, um, a good question, actually, um, actually, well, oh, there's actually a couple of good ones. Um, I'll, uh, Yay, how do you get how your do names, get our names, babe and bean? And babe. That's a good one. Oh, we just, you okay. picked the one I did. How do we get our names, babe and bean? Babe, well, I, I, I gave big babe head babe. before babe. Remember, I had short hair and everybody called me big head. Big I head. Have a, I have an extremely large, large head. And, and, and then we, when Lynn like and I you. would talk, we would talk about people and we'd say, doesn't it make you sick when people go, oh, babe, hey, babe, be, oh, babe, come here. And I was like, we'll start calling each other babe. babe. So then I started babe, calling her babe. babe. And I, she was babe one and I was babe two. But that, yeah. you know, her babe really stuck because everybody calls her babe now. But we, 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 we have to make But did I not? Me. I didn't hear, with Mom, what you said that it's that the babe had something to do with your big head, with having a big head. Well, no, I was called big head for a long time. Everybody would call me head. I was yeah. called big head too. Or, 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 hey, head. You got a big, big head like your mom. Big head senior. Still and big head junior. Big head. Yeah. Pleasant, Pleasant calls me head still. She still calls does me she? big head. Yeah, she does. Big head. <laughs> Well, you can you have a big head too. Oh yeah. I mean, it's gotten more proportional over the years. But like, there's a photo of me back when I was when I was younger, when I was a kid, like my high, from school, where my face is this big and my head's like huge. It's like a, it's it's like an oval. It's like an oval. It filled it's out. Amazing. It filled out. Your features filled it out into your face. Yeah, my face is down here and my head was like this big. 
It's it's horrible. I never want to see that picture again. And look, you turned out to be a handsome devil too. Look at you. Look at Remember you. when you had a pea head when you were when you were a page at Congress and you had like a little pea head in a suit? Oh my god. <laughs> And my head was this big and my body was like was, so then i went from being a small head so now so i, I went from being big, big big head small body to big body small head and now it's back to hopefully a, a balance a pinhead yeah pinhead in a suit but, oh my god quite on that note um we were an hour over so um <laughs> Yeah. That's a great way but to anyway, it. it's been a great pleasure being with both of you. And uh, me, me and, uh congratulations me on us. the book, Gina. It's I met you before, you know. Thank you, darling. This has been a great time. It's Belinda and I, we should we'll do more stuff, babe, sometimes. We oh, always yeah. have a good time when we, when yeah, we, we do these things. And especially with Dookie's involved, he just keeps it go going. And when we tell him he had a small head and like or he had a big head and small features, he just just ignores it and keeps running. <laughs> and I'll turn that great though, baby. Look at you. You're so handsome now. He is. Wow. He's my little boy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Samantha. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank Samantha. you all so much. Thank you, Sam. Sam. Huh? Oh, bye. Thank you, Sam. thank you. It was so wonderful to meet you all. You're so cool. I think we all wish we were the Go Go's. Um, you know, <laughs> they're in it back in the day. That was Super fun talk. Thank Everyone you. who's here, before you go, um, mm -hmm. if you put your, if you're Los Angeles based or Southern California based and you are, um, just tell us in the comments your city because we're giving away two tickets to Head Over Heels at the Pasadena Playhouse this Saturday oh, wow. at 2 p.m. And it uses GoGo's music, which is why we're giving it away at this event. Um, if you don't know more about it, you can find more on our Instagram at BookSoup. Um, so let us know and we'll put you in the giveaway. Even when we close the event, you can keep typing it. So don't worry about having to do it right this second. Um, but yeah, I know that Belinda has to go. So thank you so much for being with us. It was an honor to meet you both. Thank you, Duke. It was an awesome joy to have you as well. And great interview skills, as someone said in the comments. Um, so thank you all. And thank you for joining us at home. And everyone have a wonderful rest of your night. And don't forget to get your signed copy of Made in Hollywood. Yeah, it's great. Yes, go out there and get the goddamn book. I'll talk to y'all later. I love you. Bye, you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.